Okay, welcome back everybody to our second lecture, RBC 314 Media and Technology. Uh, this lecture is not going to be too long, it, maybe, I don't know, it will be 10, 15 minutes. Um, we're going to spend a little bit of time on uh, just talking about social media. So in the previous chapter, or the previous two chapters, we talked about digital engagement. And then we just said some guidelines on how we can optimize, how we can do our graphics and videos well, and how we can optimize them for search engines so that uh, they become more visible in, in this vast ocean of content that people are putting out every day. There's so much of content being put out. So we just follow some guidelines, you know, in terms of title, description, tags, and so on. The, the possibility of it, you know, of it being more visible uh, uh, to people and uh, being presented to people increases. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about social media and how, you know, as from a church perspective, how we can leverage that. Um, so, we obviously, when we talk about social media, we need to answer a simple question. Uh, who, uh, in terms of our target audience, so as a church or a ministry, it's okay, you know, where are our audience? You know, what are they engaging on, Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or any of those large number of uh, platforms that are there? Where are they engaging and where, should, where do you want to engage people? So uh, as a church, uh, for us, we are primarily, we are looking, we are, we are engaging um, with people primarily on these three platforms on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. Uh, we're not doing too much on the other platforms, but you know, depending on whom you want to reach, you will engage with people. So once you kind of decide on what social media platforms you want to be on, and we're not we're not talking about the video or the, the other platforms we already mentioned earlier, but these are once you decide on that then what are some things to do? Okay. Um, we need to do regular posts uh, that are from the church or the ministry. Uh, so some of the things that we do, and I'm just sharing some ideas, uh, I'm not saying everybody has to do this, but just some ideas on what we do, is uh, in, a, in addition to the live stream, which happens of our uh, Sunday sermon on, sun, on Sunday on YouTube, we post, we edit the sermon, that means we take out uh, the worship parts and the, just the sermon part. We edit the sermon, and that sermon is put out separately on YouTube and other platforms. We also do uh, sermon key points, which is a five-minute summary of the sermon. So that means you know those who say, "Well, I can't sit and watch the full forty-minute sermon. Just tell me the key points for them." You know, this thing helps. They may be interested. And some people don't even want five minutes. They just want, give me one point from the sermon. So this is that sermon highlight. So we also do a 60 second highlight of the sermon. Just whatever you can pack in 60 seconds. And that goes out on these channels. So we're giving people a lot of options. There is the full live stream that they can go and watch. Or they can watch just the sermon, the full sermon. Or they can watch five minutes of the sermon. Or they can watch 60 seconds. Of that server, one minute of that server. So all these options are there, and they all these things go out usually by Monday. Uh, they are released on these platforms. Then the other thing that we do is uh, usually by Friday of the week we announce what is a sermon coming up for Sunday, the sermon title, and those graphics work. The reason we do it is just to not only inform but hopefully try to generate interest. That hey, this coming Sunday. You know, I'm going to hear about this, right? So sometimes uh, that sermon title might interest them. They will come with expectation. Sometimes they may think about inviting their friends. Who say, "Hey, yeah, this sermon would be useful for them," so that we invite them to come. So we do that every Friday. We there's a graphic that goes out saying, "Coming on Sunday, this is the sermon title." And so on. Now, of course, we. Um, if it's a guest speaker, then we won't know what the guest speaker is preaching generally. So we just put you know, the name of the person who's preaching. But if it's our own people, we know what we're going to be preaching. Um, then typically we also uh, you know, uh, 
put out announcements of other events on our social media platforms. Um, sometimes we post testimonies in an anonymous way. We don't mention names of people. So as and when those testimony comes, a little graphic with a brief summary of that testimony goes. Uh, time to time uh, happenings, that's services, volunteers, things, pictures about the life of the church or highlighting special events, etc. go up. I just think we get a feel of what's happening. We don't want to over, overload people with that. So we're not like putting every photograph online, but there's some a little taste of what's happening at the event or at some uh, somebody serving and so on. So these are kinds of things that we, we post on our social media platforms uh, uh, as a way to engage with people. Now, of course, we use LinkedIn in a different way. So whatever I said is what happens on Facebook and Instagram. But LinkedIn is targeting professionals. So for that, it's a different thing that we do. Uh, we post uh, short articles related to people in the workplace. Uh, so that, that might be of interest to them. So we have somebody who does that, one of our church people who will do that. They'll take a summary of, of some text or some uh, of uh, something from our book, or our books and post it just to engage with people on LinkedIn. Uh, and uh, keep them interested and so on. Now, when we're using social media, some thoughts, some, here are just some good good things to do. Just, you know, it's not a, like a rule, but just some general thing is, uh, we try, try to make your messaging, that is the look and feel of, of your posts, it should look and feel the same across all platforms. Because really you're creating a persona or a personality of who you are as an individual or who this entity is as, as a community. So you're actually creating a persona. So it's important that there is a consistent look and feel, a consistent messaging, a consistent persona that, that comes across. People look at that and say, yeah, so this is this is a church that you know it does it like this. Right? So maintain a consistent look and feel you know the, like we said earlier the fonts you use the colors you use the costs that you use how you're communicating comes across consistently now one of the things that we have done intentionally is not to create a personality around the individual so right from the very beginning uh, actually in the very beginning we were very strict i told our media team Never, don't put pictures of me on the cover of any of the graphics. So we stayed away from creating a persona or a personality around the individual. We said it should be around the community, around the church. So in all the posts that we do, um, we, uh, we, we stayed away from that. Only maybe a couple of years ago, the media team said, can we use pictures of the person who's doing the daily devotional just for the daily devotional? Can we use them so that people know who's doing the devotional? And just for that, uh, we have given permission. So only for our daily devotionals on the cover of the video, you will see the picture of the person doing the daily devotional. But otherwise, we said nowhere else, you know, don't use. So we don't want to create a, pers a persona around individual. Let's do it around the church community. And that's our choice. A lot of churches and other ministries may do it differently. They create, you know, they, you'll find pictures of the pastor or the leader coming up everywhere, everywhere. That's okay. That's their choice. But our choice was stay away from individual and create it around the community so that individuals will come and go, but the community continues. Right? So that's long term. Uh, and so that's kind of how we, what we are creating. Um, sharing content is like the word of mouth on social media. So um, encourage people to share uh, on their posts, on their timeline. Right? Now, we don't force people to do it. Like we just uh, can request them, hey, if you like it, share it. Um, very important when you're doing your posts is to use hashtags. That's part of the uh, word or the keyword. Uh, but we're saying that this content is about this topic or this in this category, right? And so that helps uh, the search engines uh, index the post and make it visible to other people. 
And uh, when people search uh, for a keyword or a hashtag, it, that would, you know, that's related, it'll come up. So typically, you just, you know, you're using it as a word without spaces or numbers, no special characters. So like this, or lowercase. So I think most people are familiar with it. So uh, these hashtags are important because that's what helps that content, the graphic or the video that you've posted, be found by the right people who are interested in those kinds of things. And uh, of course, it should be relevant to what you've posted. Okay? Typically, um, the suggestion is to use about three to five hashtags for every post. Uh, don't put, you know, 100 hashtags. It make, makes no sense. They normally just use <laughs> beyond for the first 15 hashtags. So the top three to five is what will be used optimally. So use that. And, uh, uh, you know, you can use hashtags that are related to your brand. So, for example, we use all people's church Bangalore. So if somebody searches by that, they will bring all our content will come up. So you can kind of create some sort of a brand online by which people know what you're doing. So you can use that. Um, and uh, you could in include hashtags in titles and sentences. Uh, if you have space for it, you can do that as well. Um, uh, the uh, uh, yeah, so if you want to know what are the right, right hashtags to use, you can use, uh, there are some tools that help you find the right hashtags, like Google Keyword, Keyword Planner or Instagram tag search. So they give you ideas on what tags to use, what's, what tags would be most useful for your content. Right? A few other points here uh, is that um, when you're doing your social media posts, of course, there will be people who will respond. Uh, who will put comments or so on, or maybe ask questions, ask for more information. Uh, try and respond to these so that people know that you're active, you're, you're interested in, in engaging with people. And again, here yeah, we, we have certain people who are responsible for this, so they, they will handle it. Uh, I personally, and I'm not, I, don't, I don't have time to go even see what's happening. But generally, there are people who are handling all of this. Uh, they will respond or they will see what's happening. And, and look to that. Okay. Um, also, generally, uh, there's a best time to post. Um, here, there, and again, you can you can study this up. I, I don't know too much about this, but generally, they say that uh, there are certain days of the week and certain time of day when it would be most optimal to post. Um, uh, uh, so, if you post when your audience are not logged in, uh, then what you post is going to go unnoticed, and other things that are posted on the you know on their timeline come up, and what you have posted goes way down uh, on their timeline. So there is an optimal time that you could release content, and if you identify that for your audience, when are your, your audience online? What we pretend to post so that when they are online, you post, they are more likely to see what you have posted. So that's the thing. And now uh, some of our work. A lot of our online posts uh, are, are automated. That means uh, it's not like some physical person going and posting it. For example, like I mentioned, Sunday sermons, all that is all actually automated. There are scripts that have been written um, that actually keep pushing our content onto these social media platforms, all happening automatically. So uh, uh, things that happen you know, every week, we have automated those posts uh, onto our social media platforms. Uh, uh, so that it's not something manual. Uh, but other events that, that are happening you know, differently week to week, those are somebody actually does those posts. So we, we've automated a lot of those. So on. Um, in addition to these posts, you can do paid promotions and advertising on social media platforms. So with a small amount of money, you can actually reach large numbers of people. It's very cost effective. And we do that. So on our, on, on our uh, face on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, uh, we do paid promotions of maybe our books, maybe our Bible college admissions when we're taking in people, or certain events. You know, we don't do promotions for everything, but on certain events, uh, you would like to put in a little money and push it. And I think this is very very useful because uh, you can reach hundreds of thousands of people for small amounts of money. Right, so try, use that. 
uh, when whenever you want. So even if you spend five thousand Indian rupees or uh, or ten thousand or twenty thousand, you could reach lots of people, uh, and you can target them by demographics, by which part of the world they are in, or which city they are in. You can target your ads so that uh, you're making you know you're making your event visible to your intended audience. The last two points is um, it's useful to measure results. Like you said, there are metrics we can look at our website. In a similar way, you can look at metrics uh, for uh, what's happening online. So YouTube analytics, Facebook analytics, uh, insights on Facebook. Uh, these things are there, already available as part of the platform. Go and look at them, uh, see what's happening. So we can see how many people are. So every week, our team will send us a, a, a short update saying we have so many people watching, uh, we have so many people viewing, et cetera, uh, real time. So we are looking at it from so many different countries. So you can measure these results. You can see these results. And there are other monitoring tools also available. So um, there are uh, insights available from within the platforms, but you can also look at it from outside some other monitoring tools that you could use. I think there was a question here. Let me see. Yeah. OK, so question. Um, if we get hate comments on any of our advertisements, do we respond or ignore or hide it from them? Yeah, so generally, uh, we hide. So for hate comments, hateful comments, so that happens from time to time, uh, we report it and we hide it. So we don't we don't engage with hateful comments. There's no point. Uh, it just gets into an argument. So you just report it. You flag it so that uh, you know Facebook, Facebook or which other platform is they will handle it, and you hide it so you don't want others to see it. That's kind of how we respond to that. Yeah. Okay. So social media is um, is useful. But again, I, I don't know. I was just reading a recent article saying that Gen Z is actually moving back to reading physical books. You know, so it's kind of like a, a trend uh, uh, that uh, they're kind of tired of social media, and they're kind of there's a trend here to moving back to reading physical books and so on. Uh, that was just a, a recent uh, um, uh, research report that came out. And I'm not saying every person is stopping social media and moving this way. They are just finding that uh, there is this shift back to reading books and coming back to those kinds of things, which is interesting. Um, um, but to whatever extent we can reach and serve people online, we can make use of that. But I think uh, people are finding uh, social media uh, just too cluttered, uh, too sometimes, like John said, pointed out, very hateful and all kinds of things happening. So, uh, it, you know, it, it's a very sometimes becomes very distractive and very disturbing. Whereas when you're reading a book, you choose the book you want to read. You can read just that. A lot of other advantages are there. So maybe there's a shift happening, which uh, which which we also need to be mindful about. Okay. So we're going to pause here for today. Next week, we're going to shift what we've been talking about. And we're going to get into digital equipment. So I don't know if you like that, but I, uh, we're going to talk about the equipment that we typically use uh, for our work. Uh, the reason is, and, and, and you might find it strange, but the reason is uh, people, if you're a pastor or if you're a leader, for whatever reason, people in the church, even when to buying digital equipment, they come back to you. So I remember in those those early days, uh, you know, uh, when we first started, we had I, I didn't know what to buy. I had no idea about you know speakers and mics and had zero. I mean, hardly any knowledge. We had to go buy. Who I had to go buy. <laughs> I had to go buy the speakers and mixer. No, I had no idea about these things. I just went to the shop. I said, look. I want two speakers, I want three mics, and you know, how do I put it together? So I had to learn, right? When you're starting a ministry, I had to learn how to buy. And then, of course, we, as a, people started coming, uh, we needed you know, better equipment. 
and people would come and say, Pastor, we need to buy, you know, for example, I remember one of you said, Pastor, we need to buy a snake cable. I had no idea what a snake cable was. What is that? You know. So I said, so what is it? You know, and then they explained, you know, it was all these wires combined together and you have a long cable. So a lot of learning had to happen. And uh, I was like, okay, I, I wanted to ministry and I didn't realize I had to make decisions about all these kinds of things. But it was a lot of learning. And then, you know, when you had video and camera and lots of these things. Um, so, uh, so I said, okay, you know, maybe I don't need to know all the details, but eventually, because you're a leader, uh, your media team, your audio team, these people come to you for making the final decision. You have to approve it. Okay, here are three options. Which one are you going to buy? So you need some understanding, you know, some little understanding. You don't have to be an expert. Enough to have a conversation with your team to know what to buy, you know, what camera to buy, why you're buying that, why is this camera better than that, you know, uh, these kind of things, you know, okay, you're doing presentation, what software, why, 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 why this software, why not that, you know, so what I want to do is uh, from the next class, we'll go through digital, you know, software and equipment uh, for cameras, videos, um, uh, audio, live streaming. So we kind of go through those things, right? And I'm not saying we should be experts on it. You don't need to be an expert. Just have enough information so that you can have a conversation with your team and uh, tell them, yeah, this is what we will use. And a lot of this is always changing. You know, you're getting better cameras, better things. So people will come to me and say, Pastor, we need to buy better cameras. Or we need we need to add another camera, et cetera. So, you know, you have to have discussion. You have to talk to them, ask them the right questions, and then make the decision. So from that perspective, you know, uh, I will be sharing uh these things uh so next week we get into digital equipment a little bit on the software and the hardware both from cameras video cameras to audio equipment live streaming equipment what we're using and uh, just keep that in mind so that it might be useful for your church and your ministry okay so we close for today thank you for your patient listening i hope uh, uh, these things are useful and hope you'll be able to you know make use of it in your church and your ministry uh somebody could close in prayer and we'll dismiss yeah that's great Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you under the name of Jesus. I thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, everything that we learned today, God. Uh, we thank you for the technology. We thank you for the development that the world is going through. And uh, God, you fill us with your knowledge, fill us with your wisdom and uh, guidance uh, so that, God, uh, we could use these tools uh, for the edifying of the church, for uh, building up your kingdom uh, in a right way, Jesus. Uh, and uh, we thank you for everything that we learned. We thank you for Pastor Ashish. Uh, help us to be equipped in, even in this way, Jesus, so that uh, we can work mightily for your kingdom. We can uh, be salt and light uh, to the nations and nations. God, we thank you. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name and pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Bye.